بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Privacy is an important constituent, it's an important amal, it is an important type of ibadah. Hassan Basri rahimallah you say, inna min al an tuhadith bi sayri akhik. Part of breach of confidentiality is you speak about the secrets of your brother. So we've been encouraged privacy, secrecy in all aspects up to even being intimate that is your private life and should never be exposed and this is the era of exposure of secrets exposure of privacy where there is no name of privacy that's why they say the best sign of a healthy relationship is no sign of it on Facebook because you need to post everything about your relationship to everybody else. I am awake. Please respect my privacy during this difficult time. Somebody said, I am awake. Please respect my privacy during this difficult time. So face the reality. There is zero privacy. You need to create your own privacy. That's why he said data is the pollution problem of the information age and protecting privacy is the environmental challenge. So the in, in, in this information age, data is really everything and privacy is nothing. So we have to protect ourselves, protect our family, protect our assets, protect our deen and Privacy is part of that. Allah protect one and all, but when Dajjal does come, he will rely on information. And the more you are discreet, the more you'll be protected. Or in any situation, if there is an invasion in a situation of kidnapping, it's all about information. Communication is key and when you break the communication barrier and the information barrier these are two key important components in the life of a believer. So we've made a transaction with Allah and we cannot breach the transaction. <laughs> we made a transaction with Allah. After we confirmed we ratified, we agreed, the covenant, the deal is done. Allama Tabri has mentioned, huwa wasiyatullahi ila khalqihi. This is encouraging the creation of Allah. Allah is encouraging His servants. Wa amarahu iyyahum bi ta'atihi. Allah is endorsing His obedience. And Allah has forbidden them an ma'asiyatihi for disobedience. Now for a person to be sound mind and complying with the awamir, we cannot miss the commands of Allah. Wa'ahidna ila Ibrahim wa Ismail. Allah said we made a transaction even with Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam. This is your rules, follow by it, stick to it. الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَهِدَ إِلَيْنَا People who say, who accept that we've made a transaction, we've agreed. So this transaction, عَهِدْنَا إِلَيْنَا Alama Ibn Jawzi has mentioned, that uh, Amarna bi Tawrat, what we've been commanded to do. Abu Sa'i has mentioned, Amarna fi Tawrat wa Ausana, the commands, 
الذين يوفون بعهد الله those people who stick by this covenant هي أوامره على ما قرت به these are the commands of Allah and what He has encouraged us and what we have been forbidden to do وَلَقَدْ عَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ آدَمْ We made a transaction with you We've commanded you Allah Manasri has mentioned لَقَدْ أَمَرُنَا أَبَاهُمْ آدَمْ لَقَدْ أَمَرُنَا أَبَاهُمْ آدَمْ We've commanded Alim alayhi salam the father We've told him These are the rules Don't go close to the tree Don't consume the apple أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمْ Didn't we make a transaction with you? Didn't we endorse these rules and regulations? So we've got a transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question is, are we deen savvy or dunya savvy? Or both? لَا يُلَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنُ Believer when Iman is strong, he becomes a visionary not only in Deen but in Dunya as well. So, how come we're ready to protect our Dunya? How come we savvy in Dunya? But when it comes to Deen, we ignorant of a lot of aspects of Deen. So we need to make sure that we are Deen Sevi, we are Akhirat Sevi, we are Judgment Day Sevi. How do I create a look? Dua is a weapon. How, how do I use this weapon for a believer? And not only in dunya. Sometimes a person becomes such an expert in dunya, it overrides his Deen. So even the small mudakara of, of, of privacy, somebody may say, but it's, it's not pertaining to me. Yes, it pertains to you 100%. Because knowing a skill is a skill. And we have to start implementing now, not waiting for something to happen and think, oh, but I should, I heard, I, I, it was time, I, I know, I knew, no, no. Now, implementation. So eventually a person lets his dunya override his deen and he starts commanding rules for deen. So we need to become deen savvy, not only dunya savvy, and worry about preserving our dunya. Like a husband who wanted to save money, wanted to teach his wife, gave her some driving lessons. So he was teaching her and they came to a certain route and then they reached a hill. And as they were going down the hill, the car went out of control down the decline. She pressed the brakes, the pedal went down to the floorboard. She said, it's not working. He said, hand brakes. She grabbed the hand brakes and jolted it, but it didn't work. Now they're going down at a very high speed, downhill. There's a row of cars parked in front. So the wife screams to the husband, what should I do? What should I do? So the husband screams, please, whatever you do, hit something cheap. Whatever you do, hit something cheap. You're going to die. Your wife is going to die. And you're worried about saving money. You don't even know if you love. So even in that situation, a man's dunya has overrided him so much. He's still worried about dunya, not even death. So some people their whole life, even till they last, they pass 60, they pass 70, still at it, at the dunya. When you're gonna give it a break? When you're gonna stop? When you're gonna learn? So, we got one chance, one opportunity, we need to get it right. Quran and Hadith, Deen has all the lessons, but we're not good students. You can have the best professor, but you've got, if you're the worst student, it's not going to help. So, there's so much lessons, we shouldn't miss these hidayat. 
Because there's nothing. There's nothing to motivate us. There's nothing to get us up. There's nothing to keep a person in place, intact. Like a wife wakes up in the middle of the night, hears a strange noise. She nudges her husband who's fast asleep. Wake up, wake up. There's a burglar in the house. He says, yeah, what's it? She says, there's a burglar in the house. He says, go back to sleep. But she says, there's somebody. You don't understand. There's somebody who has broken into the house. I don't says, keep quiet. You know there's nothing in the house. You've got no valuables. Whatever it's going to take is not valuable. Best is going to go in the fridge, find some food. You actually want me to go downstairs while I'm having a good sleep and admit to a total stranger that we've got nothing. Don't you have any shame? Don't you have any shame? So when we don't have anything, then we're not bothered. Now a person knows the value of every ayah, every command, every hadith. Then you're going to give everything you got. That's why Maatani Rahmullah you say that our nafs has become so polluted that without all this dunya we things, all the comforts and ease, we 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 cannot develop the love of Allah. So we need to make a decision. Stay in Aram but refrain from Haram. They said the peers, uh, the, the mashaykh now tell people, discard aram, give away your life, luxury, enjoyments. But they have not encouraged people to stay from haram. So if you stay away from haram, you can have aram, no problem. It's a ni'mat of Allah, make shukr. But don't make it an objective, it's not our purpose in life. So Mala used to say that if you want to come to me, get ready to be grinded. Because the most difficult thing is staying away from haram. Is this permissible or not permissible? So we have to identify, we have to make a decision. So privacy is important, it is part and parcel of our effort. So one is on the cell phone, smartphones, we've got Bluetooth, we've got Wi-Fi. So when the person goes into a shopping center, a retail store, etc., and if his Wi-Fi is on, he's, you go to, to, to travel overseas abroad, you're at airports, you activate your Wi-Fi, you use the free Wi-Fi, you can be compromised completely. That's a gateway, an infested gateway. Likewise, your Bluetooth emissions from your device, so all your signals are collected, your movement is identified. And uh, through these systems, it could be hacked into. So all your information that potentially could be abused. So that's very important. So we have to manually go into our settings, deactivate all of this here. Try minimum, don't ever use free Wi-Fi. It's going to cost you a little bit of money, pay for it. But don't rely on a free Wi-Fi. Likewise, it is important, a decoy phone. So whether it's an old phone that you're not using or phone that broke, keep it, remove the battery. Wherever you go, keep that phone. Wherever you go. Because a person is in a situation, thieves come, they want your phone. Most of the thieves nowadays take phones because they don't want you to call for help, you know, call for backup, you're going to take pictures, videos, etc. So they take your phone or if it's just a phone to be stolen. You need a decoy phone, give it to them. Got it one or two seconds, either it's uh, safety and, and protocols of engagement, and if that's not possible, then protection. So you should have a pro protocol. When that happens and there's no way that I can protect and preserve lives, I'm going to go into the next mode. So you need to dispose of your phone secretly, hide it away, keep the decoy phone. Even your normal phone should be set in a mode, you get a feature where it can be switched off. So even if a person is Allah protect one and all kidnapped, if a person is taken 
a person's phone is taken, they'll have to break that phone to deactivate it. Because you can't manually switch it off, you need to put a password in. Likewise, a person in a situation, they want your phone, take out the decoy phone, throw it in the bush, let them run for it, and you run, go. Likewise, in a place of compromise and you need to give your phone because you want to take all the information out of it, you got a decoy phone, the other phone is kept hidden. So decoy phone in different situations when you need to give confidential information could be used in many situations. Then consider pages. In the olden days, in the 90s, people used to use pages. Still today, medical industry or areas where you cannot get hold of people is left pages. So the benefit of a pager is a person's coverage is more greater. It has more privacy because a cell phone is communicating with towers, multiple towers, and that's documenting your location. So uh, a pager doesn't send the exact location back to a tower. There's a general area of coverage, but not specific. Likewise, the frequency is lower, so it can reach better, greater areas. The coverage is greater. So different types of pages, a person can decide which one, if we needed to use it based on, on, on the stealth mode, a person needs to go into whether it's a numeric where a person can call your pager number and the telephone number, etc., etc. Then you have the one more advanced alphanumeric where you can send a text message with features of the numeric and a two-way one where you can receive messages and you can respond as well. So different devices for different needs. We discussed previously about passwords, etc. So part of that is how do you secure all your information? How do you secure your activities? So KeePass XC, this is an open source password manager and it does not synchronize any content to the internet. So with that, if you want to do uh, keep your KeePass XC database within an encrypted VeraCrypt container, which is saved on a laptop drive with encryption, then this entire drive can be backed up to an external hard drive. So now you have a secure location somewhere where nobody, whether it's a hard drive itself, whether it's a, now you get memory cards with high data storing potential. So it's left with somebody, but without anybody knowing the passwords to the encrypted drive, the VeraCrypt container, the KeePass database, which are all unique, any drive, illa mashallah, it's useless. If a person on a smartphone want to do something and keep there, then worst case scenario with an iPhone, you can use strong box safe. And uh, if it's an Android, then keep key pass to Android, F Droid. So this keeps your passwords in an offline database and it eliminates any possibility of an attack. If a person has to, and that's why we, we encourage not to go at a cloud-based password manager, but worst case, but warden, it's an open source. Open source generally, you, you, you can read the code and you can know generally there isn't much strings attached to it where there's uh, if it's not uh, open source there's a risk and uh, some of these open source software has been audited as well so that's important so to protect our information and to to keep it uh, private this is an important aspect
to make sure that we keep our information very private as well. The Amal for today is to stand in Salah but to lengthen it. Once Nabi alayhi salatu was salam was asked, Ayyu salati afdal qala thulul kunut Which salah is the best of salah? So he replied standing for lengthy periods. So generally people have a habit of reading short suwar even in their nawafil, in their muakada, ghair muakada. We should try to start learning different ayat of the Quran and increasing tulul kunut our standing posture should be lengthy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana ni alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.